I recently shared with you a tutorial for kind of a beginner friendly moody watercolor landscape. I've had a lot of fun with those. I've made quite a few. Actually, the desk behind me is littered behind you, I guess, <laughs> is littered with watercolor landscapes. I've really been enjoying it, but I found that clouds are extremely difficult. Sometimes my clouds turn out Sometimes they don't. I've tried a bunch of different techniques and I found my very favorite technique for creating those like big puffy kind of Columbus, are they, are they not Columbus, Columbus clouds. Cumulus. Yeah, Cumulus Columbus. I've tried a couple of different techniques again with kind of some varied success, but I found that my very favorite clouds to have in my compositions and probably my favorite to make are the large fluffy cumulus clouds. So they're the ones that look like big fluffy marshmallows. I love how they can reflect color so I can have a lot of fun again with kind of the color theory in my landscape if you see if you've seen my previous landscape video. Um, so I am really excited to kind of dive into my technique. I've practiced it a couple of times so I feel like I got it down. I've got some good tips to share with you today. So let's dive in. So the technique that we are going to be using is considered a lifting technique, so which is very popular in watercolors. Um, and what I'm going to be doing now is I'm taking this large quill brush. It's a, kind of like a mop brush, or if you just have any brush that will cover a large surface really well. This is a size six quill. I really love using it. Um, you're going to wet your entire sky. And then I'm going to take the pigment that we're mixing. I'm using ultramarine and burnt sienna probably a little bit of sap green in there but definitely mostly ultramarine blue and burnt sienna to kind of desaturate the whole thing and i'm just going to cover the surface area where my sky is going to be i really want to get that nice um, even coverage and it's also really important if you are going to use a lifting watercolor lifting technique like what we're going to be doing in just a moment that the space that you're working with remains wet so that you're able to lift the pigment off. You want this pigment, the paint that is on your paper, to still be active. And so you do need it to be a little bit damp. Not soaked, you don't want to have any puddles on your paper, but you do want to have a nice even sheen. So if you were to look at it off to the side, there'd be a little bit of a sheen, but again, avoid the puddles if you can. Now that we have kind of a nice even base established, it's time to grab the bath tissue. So I'm just taking kind of an uneven amount, but the key here is you're gonna get kind of a nice wad and you're going to get it damp already. I find that if you work with dry tissue, you're going to get really, really uneven edges and that's when you get kind of the weird unnatural flakes. You want the edges to be nice and soft. Now I'm just tapping it around. I am being very aware of negative space here. So you wanna look for negative space. You'll see I have that line that I've left of the sky in between those first two clouds that I created. The next thing you wanna do is you wanna make sure that the clouds look very organic and natural. So the different lumps that you're adding, the different bubbles, you're going to want those to vary in size and distance from each other. And that will help it to look a little bit more natural. Then take a damp brush. Now, barely, barely wet. Damp is even probably too strong of a word. This is a brush that is technically wet, but there's really hardly anything on it. And I'm just running over these edges to soften them a little bit more. Now we're not running into too many harsh edges because we did dampen the bath tissue beforehand. And so it's not going to be as aggressive, but by just running over the area with the brush, that will allow the sky to blend in a little bit more with the clouds and that negative space that we've created. And that will help to just soften everything overall. Now I'm taking the same pigment that I used for the sky and I'm adding it in a slightly more concentrated amount to the bottom of the clouds. Now, if you think about it, the clouds are technically under the sun. So if you're going to have a shadow during the day, it's more likely that the shadow will be underneath the clouds. And so I'm going to be strategically adding those clouds shadows in just to define the shape a little bit more. Going in very softly, again, see how I'm just like pushing my hand on the brush. You don't have to do that. That's just something that I've always done. <laughs> but you can use a bath tissue. You can use, you know, a rag to 
like really dampen it. But I found that when I'm really working on trying to get the excess pigment off that I just use my fingers. Um, and I'm just running over everything again to soften it. I really want these to look fluffy and in the distance, not have any harsh edges. Some clouds do, and some areas I might add in a more harsh, um, harsher edge, but in general, I want this to be very soft. Now, the reason I'm using the same color as the sky is so that it can kind of blend into it and it will continue to look cohesive. Now, if you really want to start playing with some color, this is where I start to do that. So I used a burnt sienna color to mix in with my sky just to help desaturate and make the sky color a little bit more moody. So now I'm going in with, I mean, glaze is almost too strong of a word. I'm barely touching um, any pigment to the paper, but I'm just lightly adding it to the shadows that I already have. Now the biggest trick with color is to remember that like shadows, a reflected color would continue to appear on a consistent side. So if you're working like from the bottom, like I am where I'm kind of, it's just kind of kissing the top of these shadows. They need to stay at the bottom for all of your clouds. It would look funny if you then started to add it on one of your clouds to the top. So make sure that if you do start to add color in there, you're keeping it nice and consistent. And you can add more than one color if you want. I wouldn't do more than two just because then it can become a little bit more confusing. I did end up adding a little bit of lemon yellow to a different area of the clouds, but overall this was the finished result. If you enjoyed this video, I would really appreciate it if you'd give me a thumbs up or let me know in the comment section down below. That's kind of how I gauge what videos we should have in the future. So art is very broad, but I'd like to know what you'd like to hear from me, um, whether it is kind of shorter tips, smaller tutorials like this one, or full landscape tutorials like the landscape that I painted, you know, for the rest. So go with these clouds, basically. <laughs> So let me know down in the comment section down below. And I just wanted to say a quick thank you for every like and comment. And every time that you share my videos with those that you think might enjoy it, it means a lot to me. It really encourages me and keeps me motivated to continue producing content like this. I trust that you're having a wonderful day and until next time, happy painting.